This episode of the Swoopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning would take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasoning such as the Cajun, the S&P Bud, the Four Horsemen, and the Soren Heat. You can't go wrong with any of the seasonings that the Mad Canadian has over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Be sure to use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who the heck is that, you might ask, if you haven't been listening for the past few weeks? Mad Canadian... <laughs> I said Mad Canadian. The Iron Bean Coffee Company uh, has, by the way, uh, a thing with the Mad Canadian. Uh, if you get the coffee in queue at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, it has Iron Bean Coffee right in it. But let's talk about Iron Bean Coffee. Uh, it is a veteran-owned... Roast to order, small batch roaster located right here in the great state of Ohio. Uh, they are in the Toledo area, Perrysburg more specifically. Uh, and integrity is sort of what they are all about. Sort of thing you might expect from a veteran. Um, uh, it actually even says on their website, integrity is our core value to do the right thing even when no one is looking. This is why all of their beans are fair trade. This is why their beans are organic. This is why they source their beans directly from Colombia, Brazil, uh, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indi Indonesia, and other far off lands. This is a company that does the right things, veteran-owned, Ohio-based. Give them your support. Give them your love, and you can do that at ironbeancoffee.com. Once again, that is ironbeancoffee.com, America's local co coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? Yo. YouTube, this is a fair warning. My internet's been cutting out all day. And as you know, if you're a, a loyal YouTube watcher, you get uncut versions of the podcast. Uh, so I'd be on the lookout for a section of the show where I patiently wait for Kyle to come back online. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you a funny story or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll meet the dogs. We'll do something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's, uh, let's rejoin our audio listeners. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you today? No complaints. No complaints. No complaints. Kyle, let's try and do a Sloopcast under an hour 15 today. All right. No promises. <laughs> no promises. Why'd you say it twice? That was five seconds. We'll never get back. Don't now. Now you're doing dead air. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now, Kyle? All we right. <laughs> Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Uh, before we go into the bounce back here, one brief recruiting news here. Uh, we mentioned a couple of episodes. Maybe it was the last episode. It was the last episode. It was the last episode. Um, we were talking about uh, defensive back Derek Davis Jr. Um, well, news comes and goes really quickly in yeah. the recruiting in the recruiting world, and Derek Davis decides to just all of a sudden decides to commit to LSU. Yeah, and yeah, you know, I think if you listen back on the podcast, I gave LSU like a ten percent chance. And I told you that I felt good, but not great about Ohio State's chances. And I also said that Derek Davis Jr. has played his entire recruitment very, very close to the chest. So was it surprising? Yes. Was it surprising that it was surprising? No, not really, because we, we just didn't know a lot about his thought processes. So commits to LSU. I expect this to be a final commitment. I don't I don't see him flipping in the next 
what is it six seven weeks at this point uh so yeah let's we can probably just move on from Derek davis jr at this point and we wish him all the luck in the world down in louisiana so with that kyle let's get into the bounce back Ohio State defeats Rutgers 49 to 27. Which is not a cover. <laughs> not a cover. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, it is what it, I mean, it was what it was and it is what it is. It's, it's just, it's, I don't know. What do you, what do you want to say? Well, I think what we need to do, Kyle, we need to talk about this game in two halves, which is convenient because it was played in two halves. So let's talk about the first half. You want to do that? Yeah. First half, obviously, did fantastic. There wasn't much really to complain about in that first half. Um, Ohio State just dominated on all sides of the football there. Held Rutgers to, I think it was like 70-some yards, 75 yards in the first half. But it just seems like, going into the second half that just Ohio State just just let off the gas and just cruised to the end there. But that first half is what we expected from this Ohio State team. First, first half. Yes. Ohio State 35, Rutgers 3. Uh, mm -hmm. Rutgers had a real weird drive that was filled with trick plays, a pretty questionable hands-to-the-face call against Tough Borland. A, I think there was even a no that was in the second half but yeah real weird drive and still even then Rutgers only got three points out of it no no real complaints there stats Ohio State had 18 first downs to Rutgers seven they were four for six on third down and on one of those failed third downs they ran a fake punt and got the first down anyway Yardage total, Ohio State 353 in the first half alone to Rutgers 83. Okay, 83. Okay. You were, you were close. Complete dominance in the first half. Complete and utter dominance in the first half. Mm -hmm. uh, in the first half, Justin Fields uh, continuing his trick of throwing more touchdowns than incompletions. Three touchdowns. Two incompletions, no interceptions, 232 yards. What, what, what are we doing here? It's complete and utter dominance. Complete and utter dominance. That's yeah. what it was in the first half. It was complete and utter dominance. Uh, this coming, uh, this is a, a good tweet, a good stat coming from Bill Landis over at The Athletic. Rutgers last five possessions. And of course he sent this at halftime. So adjust Rutgers last five possessions, 16 plays, 17 yards. This is what Ohio state was doing in the first half. Uh, I sent this tweet at halftime. Uh, halftime thoughts. Teague is running back. Number one sermon and chambers are now fighting for running back two. I, I thought Sermon had a pretty decent second half, but I still, I still, and Chambers fumbled in the second half. So, uh, you know, may, maybe we're reaching a, a decisive point in that new running back battle that I have declared. Mm -hmm. uh, Harry Miller is a good player who had a bad half. He'll get better. I still believe that. That that's that's still absolutely a thing. I believe he had what, three holding calls in, in the first half alone. Two, he had two in the first half, at least maybe a, th and maybe the third came in the I second think, half. I think almost all of his holding calls were on that one drive. He, he had, I know he, he had, had like two. He had on two on drive. the same drive. Mm -hmm. I think it was two on one, and I think it was, um, I think they did have a third hold on that one drive. It was, but it wasn't from Miller. But yeah, holding was just. It was just bad. It was it was really bad. Yeah. Uh, I said that the linebackers are fire. Uh, Justin Fields, Chris Olave, Wilson, Juice, 
god tier. They were unstoppable. You when ever Justin Fields let go of the ball, you knew something at least good, if not spectacular, was about to happen. Yeah, and you, and you heard too the announcers, and at times they were the announcers were really bad though. But <laughs> there's a there was a good point that they made about Justin Fields that they wanted to see him take shots down the field more. They're like, all right, we know you have a great arm. Let's let's see you throw it down the field. But that's just not how Justin Fields wants to do it. If it's the play's not there, he's not going to force it. No. And in fact, I'm starting to wonder if Justin Fields is very aware of his lack of incompletions and he's pro- <laughs> yeah. and that he's protecting that a little bit. Uh, I think maybe that's why he took a couple sacks he shouldn't yeah. have taken. But regardless... Mm-hmm. Well, he only uh, got sacked. I think all game was just two times. Uh, and it was two times in the first half. Cause that's the stat I looked at most recently. Uh, I said, again, this is at halftime. Rutgers is a lot better, but still Rutgers. And I said, the defensive line is playing well. I don't think the de- defensive line had a ton of sacks per se, mm-hmm. But I still thought they played really well, especially, like I said, through the first half. Uh, that And, like, that that's your first half. Um, again, Ohio State scored right off the first drive to Jamison Williams. Rutgers on their second drive, which came after Ohio State's first drive. That's, that's the silly drive we're talking about. Then Ohio State in the second quarter proceeded to score four touchdowns. Master Teague, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, and a Justin Fields run, although in in reverse order. I said that backwards for some reason. It was complete dominance in the first half. Let's call it what it was. It was complete and utter dominance. It's what you want to do to a Rutgers team. 35 to 3 at halftime. You know, I already went over the yardage differential complete and utter dominance uh their quarterback in the first half was eight for 13 for 53 yards their leading rusher was their wide receiver their second leading rusher was their quarterback complete and utter dominance call it what it is complete and utter dominance in the first half mm-hmm. any any first half thoughts before we move on to the second half Kyle no that that was that was definitely it there wasn't really much you could could excuse me you could complain about uh, I know everybody keeps wanting to rip on the the running back play which you can you still can I don't think that I think one we we've been spoiled over the past few years with running backs and this year we don't really have that elite running back as we are used to in the past few years uh, so us expecting to get seven yards a carry at ease at any given carry. Uh, it's very unlikely this year. I would like to, it appears to be. I would like to point out that Master Teague averaged 6.6 yards per carry in the okay. first half. And that he still after even after the second half, which we all we are alluding to doesn't go as well was still over five yards a carry uh, through the entire game. Trey Sermon, 5.7 yards per carry through the entire game. Steel chambers, 11 and a half, but that's, that's a bit boosted because of the fake punt. Yeah. So admittedly steel chambers, that's, that's a bit boosted. It's, it's not bad. I, (laughs) I don't know what you guys want from the running game. You have two running backs who combined for 24 carries, 128 yards. What, what do you want? That's a solid performance from the running backs. Yep. Nope. Absolutely. Neither of these guys are JK Dobbins. No one, not even Ohio State, is going to have a J.K. Dobbins every year. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. And because we, and we talked, and the we talked passing about it at- game is elite tier. You don't need to be elite tier at both. The yeah, running we, game is good enough. It's yeah, and we, talk, we talked about it, too, um, before the season start, that 
this year, Ohio State's going to have to pass to set up the run. When in the past, it's been the opposite. Yeah. I, again, it's it's fine. You yeah, we'll, you're we'll getting fine. if you're getting five yards a carry out of your top two running backs. That's perfectly fine when your quarterback is only throwing four incompletions and five touchdowns. Yeah, I saw a stat here. I saw a stat here. I can't find it right offhand, but the numbers that Ohio State has in terms of attempts, yards, um, average, and touchdowns through three games is almost exactly the exact numbers compared to 2014. And you know what Ohio State did in 2014? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's Kyle showing off his national championship T-shirt, guys. The offense is and, fine. And, and we and we and we even well we we didn't do we weren't haven't established the sleep cast um, in that year, but everybody thought that that team was that bad. that year, especially those first three games, like oh my gosh, this offensive line is so bad. They were at the beginning of the year, to be fair, and they got their shit together. They did, but you know what? We we all know how great this offensive line is. It's going to get better. Yeah. It will get better here. It will. And the same goes for the secondary. And with that, Kyle, let's start talking about the second half. All right. Uh, things went differently in the second half. Uh, uh, Rutgers kind of ends the game with, I told you, they, they went into halftime with 83 total yards. Uh, they end the game with 373 total yards, almost 300 yards for that in that second half there. Yeah. A lot of it was junk. Uh, a lot of it was Ohio state just cruising. Um, at some point late in the fourth quarter, I send the following tweet team got lazy, sloppy, complacent in the second half. It's annoying. It's unacceptable to this degree because it was they, they pulled off way too early in the third quarter. They let up way too many yards, way too many points. Yep. It's a, a team's pull up in the second half when you're up over 30 points in the first half. That's fine. But to this degree, they pull it up way too much. So to this degree, it is unacceptable. Uh, I don't think it's indicative of a larger issue with the defense or the team as a whole, it's mostly just really, really annoying. So if you end that game feeling pissed off, I'm here to say that's okay. You, you should be pissed off about the second half performance. And you could tell Ryan day was pissed off too. I mean, that team didn't come up the first team line quarterback and receivers didn't come off that field. Yeah. Well, I think it was also just to the point where you shouldn't let them off the field because the game wasn't as secured as you want it to do I mean, that. I mean, there was a point. I mean, it was 49 to 20. It was 49 to 20. Yeah. At, at that point, at that point, yes, the game is, the game's over with. But the momentum was really bad. <laughs> the me- the momentum was really, really bad. Yeah. It does it does get Chris Olave another touchdown, which for everyone playing at home is his third straight game with two touchdowns. And also his third straight game over a hundred yards receiving. Mm-hmm. And also for every or no, I take that back. He did not have a, over a hundred yards receiving. That last touchdown was fairly long, I just assumed. No, he only had 64 yards receiving. Garrett Wilson, however, did still have over 100 yards receiving. Still, though, when you're when you're fighting for that Blitnikoff, I'd rather have that touchdown than those uh, extra 40 yards. Yeah. You want to you wanna hear the, um, the second half results here for Ohio State in their drives? Yes. All right. So, punt, punt, touchdown punted which led to a Rutgers touchdown the return then a touchdown then fumble and then they ended the game I think it's worth noting that Rutgers was being really really annoying <laughs> it was, yeah. I mean look, look you look you look at you look at what 
Rutgers did here. They punted, touchdown, touchdown, punt return, touchdown, touchdown, and then fumbled at the end. So pretty much other than their first possession and then their very last one, they scored every time they had possession of the ball. I just mean from like a play calling perspective, just the, they're just pulling every trick out of the book, just with all of the reverses and Mr. X and, and it's, it felt a little backyardish. I think I saw, I think I saw somebody saying, why are you pulling all the, pulling all these plays out of the bag when you should be doing this to team when you have a chance to win? because the game was already pretty much over. I mean, it was like 35, three, 35, nine. And then you start seeing Rutgers start to do these crazy plays, throwing it back to a, to a fat guy touchdown and do these throwbacks and everything else. And it's like, okay, why, why are you showing your hand now when you could have done that in a game that you could possibly win? Because winning games does not matter for Greg Schiano this year. It just it doesn't matter. What Greg Schiano had on Saturday was more eyeballs on his team than he'll have all year in any other one game. So he was showing potential recruits out there that Rutgers is a good place to come and play. So pretty much just sending a message. Yeah. This is this was Greg Schiano saying, "Hey, Ohio State doesn't want you. Come play for me. I still have a house in Columbus. I'm Ryan Day's friend. <laughs> I'm an Ohio State guy. Everyone in Ohio, all of you kids in Ohio watching right now who aren't getting scholarship offers from Ohio State, come play for Rutgers." Did you know we're New York? Did you know we're in New York? They aren't. But did you know they're in New York? That that's why. Winning games mm-hmm. doesn't matter this year. Yeah, I, I think pretty much this game just sums up that Ohio State looked dominant and then the game got annoying real quick in the second half. Yeah, it, it was really it was really, really annoying. Uh, the secondary proceed, uh, the, yeah, didn't lo- look good in the second half. And no, it wasn't like against a bunch of backups. That was the starters who were getting, mm-hmm. who were getting torched in the second half. Yes. There was a lack of effort. Uh, I really, really like Marcus Hooker. However, there is a however coming after that. There are many instances in which he is going for a big play when a tackle will do just fine. He's -hmm. trying to strip the ball. He's trying to go for a big hit. He's trying to do a little too much when a, like I said, a simple tackle will do fine. Uh, We, we saw, you know, Cam, Cam Brown's out for the season. We saw a lot of corners on the field who hadn't seen the field in the past. We talk about how, you know, the national championship year, you had a bunch of new offensive linemen and the offensive linemen didn't look very good early in the season. Well, that's where we're at with the secondary right now. The secondary does not look very good right now, and that's okay. It You lost three insanely talented starters off out of the secondary last year there's going to be some growing pains. Now, that being said, uh, Tua, Tua's little brother, looks really good in Maryland right now. Uh, He had a real bad first game, but he's looked pretty decent ever since. More of that on Friday's episode. Yeah, so you figure it out. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Penix in Indiana is the next week. And he's starting to look pretty good. For a, for a true sophomore, for a true sophomore in Indiana, mm-hmm. he's starting to look pretty good. Figure it out, Ohio State. Indiana, 3-0. and Indiana. It hasn't happened since the 80s. Kyle, Kyle, you know what we don't do on this show? I know, a lot of, I know a lot of people are very upset about the rankings this morning, Sunday morning. I know a lot of people are really upset. 
because of Clemson, because of Georgia. And you know what? I'm once again, I'd like to point out that the rankings don't matter. They have not mattered at least, at least since 2014. At the very least, they have not mattered since 2014. They extra don't matter this year just because 2020. Mm-hmm. The, the rankings don't matter. Don't get mad about them. Now, caveat. Indiana's in the top 10. That, I, I just, I know we're not talking about rankings. I know they don't matter, but Indiana's in the top 10. Notre Dame's in the top 10. Ohio State's in the top 10. Cincinnati's in the top 10. Oh, the state of Ohio and the state of Indiana are running the top 10 right now. That's all, that's all I'm saying. How crazy. That's all I'm crazy, saying. Crazy, crazy. Back to this game. Back to this game. Uh, the linebackers, again, I thought played pretty well. The the deep the defense took the second half off, and it was stupid annoying. Yep. But I do not think that that is who this team is. I think this team is the team we saw in the first half. Mm-hmm. When they were trying... This is what they did. This is what they are capable of when they are trying. Do I want this team to only try for one half? No. Is that acceptable? No. So this isn't me making excuses for them. I just think right now there's a section of the Ohio State fan base who is in panic mode about this team's defense. And there's a section of this fan base that's just like, eh, relax, everything's fine, it doesn't matter, it's Rutgers, who cares? Kyle, where, where are you at on that before I, I continue that thought? Panic or relax? I'd just be overly caution. That's, oh, okay, what does overly cautious mean to you what I'm, does that mean? I'm neither side i'm not i'm not going to be complacent but i'm not going to be oh my gosh the panic, ship is sinking pa- pa- panic or relax if i'm between the two i'm just gonna i would have to choose more on the relax side but more on the relax so so okay relax equals zero panic mm-hmm. equals 100 okay where are you want me to give a number Okay. Uh, I would say like a, like a 40. That's a lot closer to panic. No, you said a hundred. Uh, okay. But, oh yeah, but you said, okay, whatever. Uh, no, I just, I wasn't expecting you to be that close to 50 is what I meant yeah, by I'm, that. It's overly caution. Okay. So, but Kyle is right. Now you might not have picked 40, but Kyle is, is right. The answer is neither. And I find myself spending less and less time on Twitter, but, uh, in Twitter sphere, the best way to get attention is to either be at zero or 100. That's how you get attention. And that's how a lot of people are acting. And those are the people who get attention. And those are the people who, so it's, it's, it's beneficial for one's Twitter life to be either at zero or 100 full blown panic or guys, you're all a bunch of children. Stop panicking. That's a zero or 100. All right. A couple questions but, here, but I just want to say that Kyle's right. It's somewhere in between. Now I'm probably more at, he's at 40. I'm probably more at 20. I don't think these are concerns. I think these are annoyances. That's where mm-hmm. I'm at. A couple of questions real quick here regarding to this game. Uh, Brawley asks, do we consider the O-line consistency an issue at this point? Uh, we're, th- we're three games in. We've seen issues each of the three games. Some areas improving, some not, some issues coming up and all that. But where, where do you stand on on the O-line consistency? And is it an issue at this point? It's an issue. Uh, it's not a panic issue. Yes, correct. Uh, again, uh, you, we saw some struggles out of Harry Miller. 
specifically, and that's okay. That's okay. He this is his third ever start. He didn't get a chance to warm up against the Kent States and the Toledo's of the world. It's okay. He'll he'll get better. He's very talented. He's a true sophomore. He'll get better. Uh, let's see here. Um, some of those other questions here. Oh, I'll go just, and answer that. Just, just go answer. with Brawley. Go with all of Brawley's. Yeah. All right. How does not using a year of eligibility affect this team? Uh, that's a great question. There'll be a lot of players who I think are encouraged to move mm-hmm. on to the next level. Yes. Hey, so and so. Even though you probably won't be quote unquote using a scholarship spot because I'm sh- they're going to work something out with the scholarships not counting or raising the cap or something. So even if it's not a, a, a numbers issue, there still will be maybe some players who will be encouraged to move on to let the next generation come up. Yep. I'm not going to name any names. But I, I think that's a thing that will happen. And besides that, it's Ohio State. A lot of players are just going to move on mm-hmm. because it is actually their time to move on. Yep. Yep. Um, the other two questions here are more for games that we're about to talk about here soon. But I do want to um, go over Tanner. Tanner emails us, emails us a couple of questions here, Jared. Okay. First one, biggest issue coming out of the Rutgers game. And then he has a list of um, question or options here. Is it penalties, play calling, run game, their fight desire to win, the secondary or other? Um, I don't think I don't think that play calling is an issue at all. I think that I I never find myself getting mad about play calling, at all. I, I that's not an issue for me at all. Penalties, mm-hmm. that's an issue. Uh, we've talked already about several holding calls this game. Uh, there have been some sloppy penalties, like not lining up correctly, which is yeah. kind of a thing you can expect on offense when you have a bunch of freshman wide receivers in there and not a lot of practice time mm-hmm. this off season. I'm I'm between I'm between the penalties and the secondary right now. Yeah, I, I would. I I don't think the I don't think the penalties will be a thing moving forward. The secondary, I think, is, is the biggest as issue coming coming out of Rutgers. Coming out of Rutgers, it's those two for me. Yeah, I I, I, I don't think the penalties will be an issue moving forward. The secondary yeah. is is a thing to keep an eye on. All those guys are talented. Yep. They'll figure it out. Most of them are getting their first major reps ever. Like Sean Wade is the only experienced player there and Proctor at least has some snaps, but everyone else is figuring it out on the fly. Give, mm-hmm. give, give them some patience. They'll come around. All right. Uh, he says here, one other question, position group, position groups with the biggest issues running back the O line as a whole corners, safety or other. Uh, Running backs, no. I again, I think the running backs are fine. They're yep. not studs. They're not yep. amazing elite players, but they're fine. They're very good. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say corners right now, just because of the lack of experience right now in our corners. So I'm losing I, Brown I'm probably going to the corners. Uh, it's specifically because you lose Brown. That's that's pretty bad. That's pretty devastating. Seven Banks is getting his first real time corners yes yes all right kyle what's what's next um well i was going to ask is there anything else here because all these other questions are related to national games anything else anything else about this rutgers Ohio state game uh let's see let's see let's see i i don't think so um to end this game here Officially now through three, three weeks, three games, Justin Fields, 11 touchdowns, Mm -hmm. 11 incompletions. That's, that's, that's insane. Four games in. Three games. 
three games in. <laughs> and he's averaging over 300 yards a game too. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. You know what else is crazy? Well, I shouldn't say he's crazy. You should say he's mad. He's mad. Yes. The mad Canadian. The mad Canadian is a good friend of the Sloopcast for over a year and just amazing seasonings that the mad Canadian has come up with over the past year and more to come. He has, he has some more he's cooking in his, uh, in his mad lab. So hopefully we will um, get some news here about his uh, new spices. He, he's cooking up here, but for right now, let's go over some of the seasonings he has to offer over at the mad Canadian BBQ.com. Uh, one of Jared's favorite, the coffee and Q it's coffee and it's barbecue. Yeah. You can't go wrong there. Nothing wrong there. Uh, one of my favorites, the Sonoran Heat, goes great on pretty much everything. Chicken, uh, beef, and even salmon. Great, great on any meats. Uh, the the two border. The two border. Um, I know, Jared, you talk about the two border a lot. You like to use that on um, your eggs. Bacon, sausage, the Bacon, whole breakfast sausage, thing. To great breakfast seasoning or or anything else that you want to, to mix up to. It's if you if you like sweet heat, mm-hmm. that's sweet heat in a bottle. It's 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 red pepper flakes, a mixture mm-hmm. of red pepper flakes and uh, maple. Yes. Uh, check out all of the fourteen seasonings that the Mad Canadian currently has over at the Mad Canadian BBQ. Be sure to use the promo code Sloopcast ten at checkout for ten percent off your entire order. Mad Canadian barbecue company where they have your butt covered this episode of the sloopcast also brought to you by the iron bean coffee company previous ad read i told you why you should buy from the iron bean coffee company this ad read i'm gonna talk about some of the coffees uh let's see do you like a dark roast uh then i might want to direct you towards the fierce uh the fierce is a dark roast coffee made with 100 percent arabica beans give you the edge and confidence to slay the day that one's got some caffeine in it if you're looking for like a if you're looking for a real kick in the pants you might want to check out the fierce let's see let's check out another dark roast there's the rocco the rocco is available in both a medium and a dark roast uh they says it's a they say here for the rocco he says there's something uh pretty special about Special and unique about an Ethiopian natural when it's at its best for those who enjoy coffees that insist on being noticed. Uh, Let's see. We have another dark. This one is called the drink from the skull of your enemy. It's a traditional (laughs) Indonesian coffee that is edgier and smokier. Uh, It's thick, creamy, chocolatey with notes of cedar, sweet tobacco, wine and spice. Ooh. Oh, I got Kyle's attention on that one. Uh, Another dark roast is the Fear No Evil. It's roasted to the brink of flames. They actually call this one, I believe, a black roast. It's darker than dark. Uh, This is rich black dark roast is uh, void of all light. The sheen is a polished armor. The feel is cocoa butter. They got a bunch of great coffees. They even have a selection of flavored coffees. If that's more your bag, a carrot cake, a blueberry, a mint chocolate chip. You can find all of that and more at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. That's ironbeancoffee.com, America's local coffee roaster. Okay, Kyle. We uh took the look, we took a look at the Ohio State game. So we mm-hmm. have that covered. Uh good could have been better. The classic i hate this phrase i hate this phrase because it's just so overused the classic tale of two halves can you tell in my inflection that i hate that <laughs> um but that that's what it was so let's uh let's move on let's let's go national right, one of the first f- up first up here jared a friday night game the hurricanes come back and and win over north carolina state 44 to 41 Miami's back. King is good. Yes. I'll say King is good and he's elevating that team. Mm -hmm. Take King off of that team. Eh. And I'm not, and I'm not saying he is 
Oh, I'm going to blank on his name. How am I going to blank on his name? He's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. He quarterback for the Ravens used to be the quarterback at Louisville won the freaking Heisman trophy Jackson. Thank you. Lamar Jackson. It's, it feels a little bit like Lamar Jackson at Louisville. Louisville was no one. Lamar Jackson came along. Everyone took notice of Louisville. He went away. Louisville sucks again. It kind of feels like that to me. Mm -hmm. Yep. BYU takes care of business. Yeah. Takes care of business over in Boise state land in that blue turf. 51 to 17. I hate, hate, hate watching games. In it Boise. seems like that, that turf got a little bit darker. It doesn't I, seem like it's a that bright blue anymore. I, I don't know what it is, but I hate it. Uh, yeah, but BYU, this is their biggest win so far, which I think maybe says more about their other wins than it does this one. Yeah. Uh, where a lot of us are talking right, right now, is it like, is it BYU or is it Cincinnati? BYU or Cincinnati? And Cincinnati has better wins right now, in my opinion. Yep. But BYU yep. is still very good. I'm not taking anything away from BYU for a non-Power 5. They're very good. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Uh, SMU beats out Temple 47 to 23. Just to point out, SMU is a quality group of five team that Cincinnati has a win over. Yes. Liberty beats Virginia Tech 38 to 35 in a wild finish there where Virginia Tech actually blocked the field goal and took it back to the house. But... <laughs> But the coach called timeout. Yeah. Play did not happen. Nope. Liberty gets a chance to kick it again. Yep. And makes it. One of uh can we stop icing the kicker? Yeah, no kidding. Statistically, it does not work. It doesn't mm -hmm. work. They've done studies on it. It doesn't work. And if you call the timeout too late, then the kicker gets a practice kick. You're giving him a practice kick. Yeah. Stop icing the kicker. It doesn't work. Yep. You know what else doesn't work? This <laughs> Michigan team. Yeah. Just Michigan. The entire, loses. the entire state of Michigan. Michigan loses to Indiana for the first time since 1987. Not, not they lose. They don't just lose. They got dominated. Yeah. 38 to 21. Jared. Pe Penix looks good. Jared. Yeah. It's Harbaugh in the hot seat. Harbaugh, the, I mean, again, I'd like to point out that he's in a contract year. They're not going to fire him. They're just simply not going to resign him. Mm -hmm. There's no, there. so he's going to finish out the year and then Michigan's going to attempt to sign um, Luke Fickle. I think it's one of the first people they call is Luke Fickle. Uh, they'll attempt to sign. I'm blanking on his name. The head coach at Iowa state who I think would be a very good hire. Mm -hmm. You missed your chance. Sparty. You missed your chance. Yeah. Speaking of Sparty. Sparty. Dominated. They had, they had a great win. They're, they're, they're a real team, right? No. Okay. We've been trying to tell you guys like Sparty gets a win over Michigan and, Sparty does this and Sparty does like, Hey everyone, maybe Sparty isn't terrible. Nope. Uh, Sparty loses to Iowa 49 to seven. The big 10 is in full ACC mode right now. They are. Yes. This is the and, most and was, ACC I've ever seen the big 10 look. And that was my worry going into this year. Cause I'm like, I'm like, huh? I feel like Ohio state is well, well above everybody else, but how is that next tier of Big Ten teams? Not looking all that good right now. Your your next your next team, yeah, in the East right now is Indiana, Maryland, and at the very bottom mm -hmm. is Penn State and Michigan. <laughs> the good news for Penn State and Michigan is that they do eventually get to play each other, and they both have a shot of beating each other. <laughs> good. Good job, guys. Stole that from Doug Lay Maurice. Yes, Not going to lie. Thanks, Doug. <laughs> um, wrapping up the Big Ten here. Well, not wrapping up, but 
Another one in Big Ten. Northwestern beats Nebraska 21-13. to I thought the, Nebraska was going to have a better showing here, but yikes. I, I and Again, the Big Ten's in full ACC mode. I don't know who's good and who's bad. They're all just playing each other. Uh, we'll, we'll see the Minnesota score a little bit later. I, I don't know. I, guys, I just don't know. Uh, I think the second best team in the conference right now is Wisconsin. And, like, prove me wrong. <laughs> I dare you. They only had one game. And they looked really good against a Minnesota team that we have no idea how to evaluate either. Yeah. Boston College uh, beating Syracuse 16 to 13. Boston College, every game is going to be a close game. Doesn't matter who they play. Every game is going to be a close game. This is how Boston College is rolling this year. And I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Another power five team here, Marshall. Or Marshall non- looking really good. Power five. 51 to 10 over UMass. Non-power five, you meant? That's what I meant, yes. Yes. Yeah, thundering herd. It just It's the year of the group of five. Mm-hmm. Keep an eye on it. Yep. Oklahoma takes care of business over Kansas, 62 to nine. Yeah. That's what this, that's what, that's what this uh, Rutgers game should have been. Should have been like that. Yeah, probably. Should have, could have, would have. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just say, yeah, probably. Minnesota over Illinois, 41 to 14. Again, like now Minnesota's, I'm not going to say good because Iowa, even if there's any consistency in the Big Ten, it's that Iowa is really bad. Excuse me, Illinois. I said Iowa. Illinois is really bad. Yes. Maryland, Jared. Maryland. Yeah. Penn State 35 to 19. Yeah. Um, again, to his little brother looks pretty good. Bad week one has looked good ever since. Mm-hmm. Uh, Penn State's a dumpster fire. I saw, I saw reports over at in Penn State land over seeing some screenshots of a lot of the fans is like, uh, who can we have as a coach now? <laughs> the, the first response is always Urban Meyer. <laughs> uh, speaking of Urban Meyer's teams, Florida, yeah, Florida beats Georgia forty-four to twenty-eight. So this is now the second game Georgia's been completely blown out in. Mm-hmm. Okay, just keep a track. Not not lost. Not blown lost. Out. Yes. Blown out. Yes. Okay. Just pointing that out for no reason in particular. No reason <laughs> at all. Not because we don't talk about rankings on this show. So I'm just pointing that out for no reason in particular. Mm-hmm. Now, what I will point out is how dominant Cincinnati has been looking as they yeah. beat Houston 38 to no, no, 10. God. God, we can break the rule for Cincinnati. Cincinnati's in the top 10. Everyone say it with me now. Top 10 Cincinnati. Everyone say yes. this with me now. Say this with me now. Top 10 Indiana. <laughs> All right. That's the last one we'll talk about rankings for now. Is it? For now. <laughs> for okay. now. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cincinnati is just well-balanced team here. Yeah. Defense, offense. They just look really really good agreed uh who's been very inconsistent oklahoma state yeah over kansas state 20 to 18 i think this was our one real shot all day because team chaos we always say no one beats team chaos team chaos took a black eye this week Mm -hmm. no no chaos really to speak of this week uh oklahoma state almost picked up their second loss of the season this would have. I mean, this North Carolina been, State, North Carolina State could have. That would have been a. That would I, have been a. Allow me to rephrase. Uh, on Saturday. Okay, on Saturday. <laughs> All right. Uh, Iowa State comes back and beats Baylor thirty-eight to thirty-one. Yep. I, I still think Iowa State's the second best team in, in the Big Twelve. Uh, I mean, we'll see. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I'd be interested to see because Oklahoma is either a figuring things out or b playing Kansas. <laughs> so, 
So, so we'll see. We'll see. Texas A&M over South Carolina, 48 to three. This is the time of year where we all pretend Texas A&M is good. Mm -hmm. The best team in South Carolina, the state of South Carolina right now. Yeah. Coastal Carolina. Um, I think, I think you're forgetting one. <laughs> oh yeah. There's that team too. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only undefeated team. There you go. In South Carolina. It's Coastal Carolina. I always have to stop and think, wait a minute, Clemson is, yeah, they're South Carolina. Yep, they are. Yeah. Because they basically sit on the border of South Carolina and Georgia. So I always have yes. to, yeah, South Carolina, South Carolina. Mm, yeah. Pac-12 is back, Jared. Pac-12 is back in Oregon, takes care of business over Stanford 35 to 14. We'll keep an eye on Oregon. I think that's their only real chance to get in the playoffs this year. So got to keep an eye on Oregon this year. Mm. All right, Jared. Beginning of the year. Don't 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 skip it. You're not going to skip this next one, are you? No. Okay. Beginning of the year. Yeah. Who the hell? Yeah. Who the hell? Uh huh. Ranked Tennessee. Whoa! What what did you just say? How dare you talk about and then preseason rankings, Kyle? You you bring up rankings, and not only do you bring up rankings, you bring up preseason rankings. The, the dumbest of all rankings. And this proves it right here. This proves that right here. That preseason I, I, rankings are dumb. Hey, I, can everyone, everyone join me real, real quick? I'm going to get real close to this microphone. I'm going to stare right into the camera. Someone send this to Clay, Tra Clay Travis. Hey, Clay Travis, how do you feel about that uh, Greg Schiano thing now? <laughs> we know, we, yes. listen, we all know it had nothing to do with Penn State and that that had nothing to do with anything we all know it you just didn't want greg shiano to be the head coach at tennessee how are you feeling about that right now clay 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 we all know it was a football thing you tried to pretend like it was a moral thing no one believes you no one believes you this was a football thing how do you feel about costing tennessee a chance at greg shiano now clay Clay, be honest. Don't answer, Clay. Don't answer. Just think about it. All the talent they have over in that university just gone to waste. Uh, in year that, end and year out. In, in that state. In that state. <laughs> Let's slow down on university. Okay. Well, Tennessee loses to Arkansas 24 to 13. Yeah. All right. Arkansas is bad. Tennessee apparently is worse. Yes. All right. In the game of the weekend, Notre Dame in double overtime beats Clemson 47 to 40. And what everybody will be calling the super spreader. Oh, good Lord. Uh, we've made it this entire episode without <laughs> talking anything about the pandemic, Kyle. And you just had to. All right. Listen, it's what everybody's talking about. Okay. Listen, I'm, we're gonna we're gonna stare into the camera again. Hi, this is Jared. I'm of Hi, the Sloopcast. How are you doing? Hi, Jared. I'm, I'm talking to a bunch of people right now. Now I know a lot of people feel one way about COVID, and I know a lot of people feel another way about COVID. I know. I but I'm talking to both of you right now. Listen, it doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter how I feel, or how Kyle feels, or how the other people listening to this podcast feel doesn't matter. What matters is how the ACC feels about COVID and the ACC has protocols that says if you pop positive for COVID, then you have to miss football games. So when the entire student body rushes the field to celebrate with players, not just, that not just their own players, not just their own players, Clemson players right there too. Well, the Clemson players at least tried to get out of there. Mm -hmm. But do, do you see the problem? Even if you, you don't think much, the ACC thinks something of COVID. You could cause your team to, or your players to miss games. Yes. Even if you think it's not a fair, blah, blah, blah. The ACC disagrees with you. All right. That being said, what a win by Notre Dame. 
Yes, Trevor Lawrence does not play in this game. Yes, that matters. Yes, he doesn't play defense. Yes. All of these things are true. <laughs> All of these things are true. Because th- th- that's, again, Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and, ha- and ha- hats off, though, to Notre Dame. They have yeah. the game plan of stopping um, ETN. Which they, they did. did. They, they profoundly did. And they're like, all right, you're just going to have to beat us through the air. Clemson almost did, but hats off to Notre Dame. They stuck to their game plan. And Ian Book, that last drive in that fourth quarter, man, what a, what a statement that was. Yeah, lot, lots to talk about here. One, again, so we're going to talk about, so DJU, I'm, I'm not even going to try it. Uagulale? Nope, that wasn't, I, 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 I tried, I tried. <laughs> Give me credit for trying. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Two touchdowns. No interceptions. 439 yards. I'm not saying that having... I'm not saying he's as good as Trevor Lawrence. I'm not saying that if Trevor Lawrence... I'm not saying Trevor Lawrence's presence in this game doesn't affect this game. I'm not saying that. I am going to say that he wasn't the reason they lost. Trevor Lawrence does make Clemson better, even in ways that doesn't necessarily show, particularly in Trevor Lawrence's stat line. I think that Trevor Lawrence is worth a point over DJ, DJ, (laughs) um, and I think that if he were playing, Clemson would have won. That's what I think. I also think that Clemson has problems, especially on the defense. These You can have both of those thoughts. Some people are saying, well, it doesn't matter because Trevor Lawrence didn't play. And some people are saying, oh, Trevor Lawrence doesn't play defense. And you know what? You're both right. Those, you you don't disagree with each other. Both of those things are true. Clemson has serious defensive issues right now. Clemson is and will be better with Trevor Lawrence at quarterback. Both of those things are true. Yep. So, Kyle, what does this mean for the national title picture now? Um, Clemson's still in it. I mean, they lost to a highly ranked team without their quarterback in double overtime. You can't you can't really punish on the road that much for and losing for losing a close game like that. Double overtime, another top five opponent in the mm-hmm. in their place. Yep, and, and it's not like they lost to a high rank team, not just lose, but get dominated. Right. But Double yet, overtime. So don't move down much. Double overtime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's looking at you, Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> so the question here is, does in the national scope of things in the playoff scope of things does, and it matters for Notre Dame. That's not what I'm asking. This absolutely matters for Notre Dame. Notre Dame just became that quote unquote fourth team, even if that actually means they're the third or second team, but Mm -hmm. that that's a different conversation, different day. What does this mean for Clemson and the playoffs? They just need to win out this. And we've talked about it. I think pretty much every year, Jared, you, you get, you get one up, you get one, you get one man. All right, that, that's your that's your one up there. Yeah, that's you all get, you get. You get one Mario man. That's it. You, you okay? Now you're playing without a net. Yes, but they do get. But the committee will take an effect that hey, they didn't have Lawrence in there, so sure. they will they will take that into consideration too. I also say this: in a season in which it is very possible that a group of five team makes the playoffs. Maybe not very possible, but more possible than normal. That number one seed is insanely valuable. Just like last year. 
just like last year. Whoever, you know, you'd much rather play Oklahoma mm-hmm. than play Ohio State or Clemson. You want that number one seed. This yep. does hurt Clemson in pursuit of that. They're not going to get the number one. I don't, you can give them the Trevor Lawrence excuse all you want. Clemson's not going to get that number one seed over Ohio state or Alabama. If both of those teams are undefeated at the end of the year. Correct. So from that perspective, it absolutely matters. Mm -hmm. And also it sets them up, sets them up for a second loss, which also matters. Hey Jared. Yeah. Barley asks you in particular, um, your opinion of Ian Book, did it change at all from the game versus Clemson? Uh, I've also seen Boston College rip apart Clemson through the air. I think uh, so. A big question going around right now is Ohio State, quote unquote, national caliber team, a national championship caliber team. Because, well, the second half in the minds of a lot of people prove that Ohio State is not a championship caliber team. I would ask you to watch some Clemson and some Alabama games where they're also struggling on defense right now. Everybody is struggling on defense right now. No teams are. Ohio State might not be as good this year as they were last year, but I also don't think that matters because I don't think anyone else is either. Everyone is struggling in some facet of the game right now, including mm-hmm. Alabama and Clemson in also their past past defense is very difficult right now. And it's because yep. of the shortened off season. Yep. So Ian book, you know what? Yeah, I, I do think he's better now than I did mm-hmm. at this time last week. Does yes. that mean I think he's any good? He's a, he's a passable college quarterback Mm -hmm. but he's nothing special yep i put him with sam ellinger and um kellen mund and all the rest of those guys who can win you games but aren't going to win you a national title Mm -hmm. one more question for brawley here jared does jimmy harbs make it to the ohio state game yeah 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 they won't fire him no for that for that contract no they're not they're not getting rid of him Uh, they're having a lot of issues just in the university right now. I haven't followed up on it, but I I know a couple months ago, there was a vote of no confidence against the university president. I have no idea. I haven't followed that story since then. I have no idea what has or hasn't point is, is that the university is having issues right now and firing the coach mid season. Just, I don't think is on anyone's radar of importance, especially as I've already stated, he's in a contract year. It's really just not Mm. necessary. Yep. Just let the season play out. Let the contract expire. Go hire someone else. All right. Let's, an- let's answer one more question here from Duncan. He asks, LSU went from garbage to natty to Springfield tire fire. So I'm willing to have my opinion changed solely because I like Fickle as much as everyone else. What has changed from last year's Cincy team that got embarrassed at the horseshoe to make them a playoff caliber team this year? You want, you want the truth? Do you want the truth? I like Fickle too. But do you want the truth? The mm-hmm. reason they didn't get embarrassed at the horseshoe this year is because they didn't play in the horseshoe this year. That's that's it. We kind of never took... Cincinnati looked great at times last year. Absolutely great. Mm-hmm. They look better this year. Why? Because it doesn't matter how good Cincinnati looked last year. No one was going to talk about them as a playoff team. Because they got run out of, was that game 70 to nothing last year, Kyle? No. 52 no. to nothing? No. 49 to nothing? No. They shut out. I thought it was some... more of like 31 nothing. I'm going to double I... check. I'm... Okay. No, you're right. It is. It was 42 to nothing. Okay. 42 it was to 42. nothing. 42. Okay. okay. Nowhere near 70. I don't know where I got that. Yeah. I don't know. This wasn't Bowling Green or anything. Is that, wait a minute. What was what, what was the Bowling Green score? Oh, they didn't play Bowling Green who last year. Who was it? They, they, they had a MAC team last year. I don't remember who it was. Uh, Work with okay, me here. Yeah, it was Miami, 76 to 5. It's 5? 
five. <laughs> yes. Remember, remember, Miami no. was up two nothing. I obviously don't remember. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that that's where I got the seventy from. <laughs> Point is, is that Cincinnati looks so good this year because they haven't. I played yes. anyone outside of the American Memphis lost a lot of talent and isn't nearly as good this year. Although they're still probably better than Tennessee mm-hmm. that. So that's why, because yep. Cincinnati looked really, really good at times last year, but we just never took them seriously. Cause we saw what happens when they play an actual big boy football team. That's all. Sorry, Fick, but it's true. And you know it. Yep. Any other Ask Sloopcast questions? Uh, that is all. Oh, anything else from last weekend? Uh, let's see. We talked uh, Super Spreader event. We talked a little bit of playoff. Kyle, okay, screw it. Kyle, top four. And no particular, don't don't get caught up on the order. You don't have to get caught up on the order. We're not doing that yet. Just who who's in? Just four teams, no particular order. Alabama, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Clemson. In in that okay, so now the question in that order. Yes, I I think so. I think so too. Maybe even Notre Dame at number one. If we're really going by like who deserves it. I mean, Alabama's looked really good. Even, I mean, you can argue, but they don't where, have. You can argue where Georgia is ranked and all that, but I think they have a better schedule of who they played so far. But who I, has I give the nod? But who to, has the best win? Who has the best singular win? Notre Dame. At this point right now, it would be Notre Dame. But Alabama has just looked good just uh, consistently all year. And we've seen at times Notre Dame look at the Louisville game. Look how bad they looked there. I think Alab- I, I think you're being a little selective with your Alabama memory. I think they've had some bad games as well where they've given up a ton of points to some, was it Mississippi state? Mm, yeah. There was that shoot at that big 12 shoot out there. Yeah. So yeah. I, you're being a little selective with your memory. I think again, okay. everyone is flawed. Everybody is flawed this year. I call it a lack of, I think the, and I think this is also why Kyle, you're seeing a lot of these group of five teams performing so well. Mm. Man. Because I think that our lack of, I think all of the confusion, all of the COVID bullshit, all of the 2020 bullshit, all of that, that disrupted practice, that disrupted schedules, that disrupted everything else is basically this great equalizer that's sort of sucking everyone towards average. It's sucking yeah. some of the bad teams up. It's sucking some of the good teams down. Man, looking at Alabama, excuse me, looking at Alabama's schedule here, Jared. LSU, Kentucky, Auburn, Arkansas. Favorable, very favorable for uh, Alabama. Yeah, Bama's going to, well, I mean, of course, there's the the regular season. Florida looks good. We'll see what happens. Uh, presu- I, uh, mm-hmm. That almost feels like a lock at this point. Florida's going to win the SEC East. We'll see. Uh, yeah, but so as ca- far I'm as curious. the actual regular season goes, Bama's going to finish mm-hmm. undefeated. Yeah, so I'm I'm curious, and Notre Dame has a favorable as well. They play Boston College, UNC, uh, Syracuse, and in Wake Forest. Boston College. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for that one. That'll be fun. It'll be fun. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying Boston College is going to win, but I'm going to say it's going to mm-hmm. be fun. With Ohio State, well, looking at it up front, you're like, oh, this looks like an easy one up until Michigan. But as we talked about <laughs> earlier, Maryland, Indiana, Illinois, Sparty. And the team up north. Yeah, all, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it, it now looks like Indiana mm-hmm. and Maryland are the toughest games mm-hmm. on the schedule. And now Clemson, Florida State, Pittsburgh, Virginia Tech. Yeah, they're, uh, well, I mean, Pittsburgh did just run Florida State out of the building. So I guess they have that going for them. All right. so yeah, it's looking, it's looking like it's. Kyle, we're not going to hit our minute or our hour 15. Let's, all right, that's, let's, let's that's all I got it. here. Let's end, that's it. All I got. let's end it. All right. Let's see. Uh, I want to encourage everyone, uh, check out our Discord channel. Uh, there's both free and premium channels in there. We're talking a ton in the free channels as well. 
uh, we we are just trying to get a bunch of people in there. If you don't know, Discord is just a private chat server. That's all it is. It's just like a it, it's somewhere in between a message board and a group text. If that is that a fair assessment, Kyle of Discord, somewhere in between a message board and a group text. Yes. So. Yes. If you want to be on a big old group text with uh, Kyle and I and a bunch of other people who like Ohio State football, join Discord. Uh, it's just an app you download on your phone. You can get an invite from us. We'll hook you up. Uh, if you want access to the premium channels, early access to episodes, uh, a bunch of other cool little goodies, uh, go ahead and hit us up on Patreon. The first tier, which is really realistically the only tier you really need to be on, the first tier is only three dollars a month. Follow us on Twitter. You can see if you're watching us on YouTube, you can see our Twitter handles right there on the graphic. I'm at Sloopcast. Kyle is at Sloopcast. Kyle. Kyle, is there any other way to spell Kyle? I felt the need to go K Y L E, but I, that's not necessary, is it? No, it's not. Okay. I didn't know if there were some weird B O B B spellings out there. I don't know. And let's see. Uh, that, right, Jared? What's that? I, said, I wouldn't know that, right, Jared? Oh my God. There's a million ways to spell Jared. <laughs> and if you're looking for links to the Discord or to the Patreon or to our t shirt stores, I'm wearing a 7071 Toledo Inferno shirt right now, uh, or links to the Mad Canadian or to Iron Bean Coffee or any of the other things we talk about on the show, you can go to Sloopcast, or excuse me, the the sloopcast.com you can go to the sloopcast.com check us out on youtube check us out on your platform your uh, podcast platform of choice all right kyle i think that's all the things do you have anything in kyle's corner um we can talk about the uh pick em games here we didn't even talk about oh uh, for the, the sloop picks. For, yep for last weekend we had abandoned ohio cemetery mm-hmm. <laughs> coming out on top here he he got six out of seven right there. The only one he did not get right was the Ohio State game. I, was, I knew you were going to say it. <laughs> uh, see, Cooper and Chad had five. And we had a bunch of people with four, including yours truly. And Jared with three. Or, or did we beat Austin? Uh, Austin had four as well. Oh, so tiebreaker between you and Austin. All right. How many points? What was the total point it should, score? It should say right on the thing. Who's who's above who in the order? Well, I know. I'm just asking you. I'm, I'm I don't remember. It's suspense. I don't. Right. It was We're trying to, to 27. stay under an hour 15, Kyle. No right. suspense. Austin had, Austin had 69. Nice. And I had 70. Prices, right? <laughs> Swain, what was the actual total? It was a lot more uh, than it that. It right? was seventy-six. Yes, we saved ourselves some money, Kyle. High five. <laughs> Who? No T-shirt for you, Austin. <laughs> wow, jeez. <laughs> so for so for the year right now, we have Jay uh, still in first with twenty-seven. Tanner twenty-four. Uh, abandoned Ohio Cemetery moving up, tied for third with myself with twenty-two, and Jared. Mad Canadian and Duncan in tied for fifth with 21. Austin, in case anyone who doesn't, I know Austin knows anyone. We love Austin. He's one of our most active people in the discord server. Austin mm-hmm. knows we love him. That's yes. I only make that joke because I, because Austin, we, yes. we know Austin's one of the best friends of the, one of the best friends of the sloop cast for sure. Yes. All right, and that is it. And I have here that that is a minute 14. Yeah, except I still need to introduce tonight's band. Uh, tonight's band is Lopan. Uh, they're an Ohio metal band. Don't don't get too scared off from that. It's not going to be too. Ab- I know it's not it's not like death metal or anything like that. It's not too abrasive. Check it out. Lead singer has an, not a good metal voice, but a good voice voice, a, a classically good voice. So uh, stick around for some Lopan. And uh, with all of that being said, Kyle, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters once again. This is Low Pan.
And then, of course, Kyle, we also have to talk to our YouTube audience. Yep. And Sorry, th- YouTube. Kind of a runny nose here, so apologize. <laughs> and then we also still have to do ad reads. So, no, we did not hit our hour 15, Kyle. <sighs> oh, darn. But in attempting to hit an hour 15, we were way under an hour 30, which was actually the goal. Yeah. All right, YouTube, let's uh, rejoin our audio listeners. Kyle, I'll go first this time. Oh, YouTube listeners, make sure to uh, stick around for the playlist on my face. Excuse me. Yeah, no, no, the playlist on my face and the subscribe button on Kyle's face. Make sure to stick around for those and give us a follow. Like the video. Comment on the video. Do all that happy horseshit. All right. Now we'll rejoin the audio listeners. Thank you, Lopan, for ending today's show. And thank you to the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's show. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based roaster of beans. They are a small batch roaster. They roast to order. That means that your beans are not sitting around in a warehouse that then gets put on a truck that is then taken to a grocery store where it sits in the back where it sits for weeks and then taken to the shelves where they put the fresh ones and they put the fresh ones in the back because the ones in front are already stale. No, 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 no. We we don't do that at Iron Bean Coffee. You order the coffee off of the website. They take the beans. They roast them. They package them. They put them in the mail and they send them to you. Doesn't sit around forever waiting to get to you. This is a fresh roast coffee. Also, if you guys don't already, uh, I, I know I grind my own coffee beans. Now, if that's just a thing that you're just like not ever going to get into just cause well, know that if you're getting ground coffee beans from iron bean roaster, not only is it being roasted fresh, it's also getting ground fresh. So that's basically the next best thing to ro- or to grinding the beans yourself because they weren't ground all that long ago because it wasn't even roasted all that long ago. Basically what I'm trying to say is if you're trying to up your coffee experience, a lot of you, a lot of people working from home, you're not drinking that awful, awful office coffee anymore. You're drinking coffee at home. Up your coffee game. We're all trying to get through 2020 together. Don't do it with inferior coffee. Check out ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian, mad, mad like a hatter, as we like to say here. He likes Absolutely. To write, he, like, he likes to write um, um, angry, emails? Email, angry emails to Jared. Oh, God. what I, I, <laughs> I've just been sending them all to Kyle... Cause I just can't right now because 2020 <laughs> because 2020. Oh, what do you got there, Jared? Let's, let's, let's do a pair here. Uh, that one is the, the four, four horsemen. horsemen. That one is his, his very spicy uh, seasoning. You want something with the, with the big kick at the end there. <laughs> Go with the four horsemen. That's a there. big kick at the front, the middle and the end. <laughs> yes. Um, let's pick a second one there, Jared. Okay. Uh, I actually used the Brits blend this weekend. I made some Buffalo chicken dip and I had, uh, introduced some South other Southwesty things into the Buffalo chicken dip. Yes. So Brits blend. Brits blend. Yes. I, I also, made, time, I also made some ne- shredded beef this weekend and used the coffee and Q. Yes. The, um, the, the Brits blend, the next time I'm going to make the, uh, my, my buffalo chicken dip. Yeah. Putting that Brit blend in that one there. Abs- that's a that's a quality choice, Kyle. Yes. Uh, be sure to check out all 14 
seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Make sure you use Sloopcast 10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. YouTube, my face. Subs- uh, no, Kyle's face. Subscribe. Subscribe. Uh, if you're watching this on Buckeye Scoop, you can subscribe to the Buckeye Scoop on his face. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, then you can subscribe to our YouTube channel on Kyle's face. And no matter which one you're currently on, jump over to the other one and subscribe on that one too. And like both of the videos. We upload all of these videos twice. So make sure to do that. And then my face, my face, that's a, that's a playlist of all of our season six episodes. So check it out. Peace.